Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm the Arkansas RC Newbie, and we have got some problems with the Desert Lizards once again. Alrighty, I'm going to do this, and I want you guys to watch. I'm going to pick up my axles by the, uh, by the pumpkins here, right? And I want you to see what happens. Yeah. Does that look correct to you? No, these things should be dropping down. And the reason they're not dropping down is because the desert lizards are locked. They're completely stuck. I have to kind of jar these things open. See that? Look at this. Now look at it. So they actually sink down. I don't know what the issue is. I've been trying to problem fix it. I've been trying to kind of rig it up a little bit and it's not working. So I finally got me something I think just might do the job. So without further ado, guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's get into taking these desert lizards apart. guys here is supposed to be the fix this here is t factory team green slime shock lube apparently this stuff right here will help lube up those o-rings i was talking to guys at the hobby shop and they said you know what i think your o-rings are sticking on the stanchions okay so we're going to try to see if we can fix that today now if you guys haven't seen the last video that i posted um, on the channel about these desert lizards they're completely stuck and they've done it again just sitting here it's the weirdest thing i'm pushing down putting pressure and there they go right they go all the way up and now they're free so every time before i enter a crawling competition right before i crawl i have to break these things loose and just hope that they're not going to lock up on me on the trails i'm about done with these guys um, i'm hoping that this stuff's going to help out today we've got some o-rings in this area here um, and we've still got that piston up there that i even drilled out i've made those four holes bigger on the piston and it's still not helping i put the uh i put o-rings down here to kind of keep space on there and they were sitting about that high it was hurting me as far as the center of gravity goes so i took them off before the team comp so let's go ahead and let's start taking this apart and let's see in here if we can kind of lube it up and guys, let me know in the comments if this has happened to you or if it's something that you've experienced or somebody that you've been crawling with understands. I've got no clue. I'm just tired, sick and tired of trying to figure these things out all the time. And them just not working like everybody else's, you know? All right, I'm running 15 weight shock oil. Those pistons there, can you see the four? Those are all drilled out to be even rounder so we get even more movement in there. But everybody warned me. They said, man, those things are hard to set up, but they're really good. And I have not got the really good from them yet. All right, so we've got that out. Now we're going to pull this out of the stanchion or the shaft. Now we do have a little C-clip on the top of that aluminum housing. Okay, make sure it doesn't fly out of there. All right, so that's the clip there, if you can see that. All right, we have a plastic O-ring followed by a rubber o-ring that's very lubed up outside and in and i was kind of hoping that this was going to be really dry on the inside and the reason why the um the shaft or the the stanchion there wasn't moving in and out of it freely okay we've got oh we got one more o-ring in here now this o-ring is actually can you see that it's actually a little bit more dry on the inside the other one was inside and out this one's lubed up well on the outside but it looks a little like it might be a little sticky on the inside and that might be the problem there hopefully it is and we have a just a little plastic piece that sits at the bottom of the shock and that seems, I don't know if there's supposed to be any lube on there at all. Okay, now let's look at this stuff. I'll put all of this stuff in the, in the affiliate links below, guys, if you're interested in trying to find something like this or if you're having the same problem. $5.99 at Hobby Town. Ooh, looks kind of nasty there. Kind of has like a little bit thicker consistency of Vaseline. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit and we're going to rebuild these up. So let's go ahead and get some. We'll put on this guy here, mainly on the inside. Next is going to be this O-ring that was at the bottom that was kind of, kind of dry. Get a little bit more of this stuff. And this comes with a decent amount. I mean, you don't really need a whole bunch of all this small stuff. Now the top piece, the little plastic disc. I don't think there's very much resistance on there, but we'll put some on that too. What we're going to do is we're going to put this stanchion through here. We'll even put a little bit on the stanchion. I think it's all going to get wiped off, but the more the better, right? Okay, now we're going to push it through. I'm going to put this C-clip on the bottom portion. I'm going to try to pull it, and kind of, with one hand there. So I can kind of pull all of that stuff down in there while I set this C-clip in there. 
Okay, I think I finally got it. I mean, it does feel a little smoother down there. I just don't know if that's going to be the proper fix. Now, this might be really good to kind of prevent some damage from happening and drying out of the O-rings, but I don't know if that's going to fix the problem. All right, let's build this guy back up, and then let's uh, put her put her back on the shock, and let's see what it feels like. All right, so it does feel a little bit smoother now, and I notice that this is moving a lot freer, but if you guys see that little bit of gap there, it's not because there's air in there, it's because that spring setup that I've got, it's not long enough to push this stanchion all the way into the bore. But what I can say is when I'm used to sitting it down right there, I can feel a lot of resistance, and right here it's actually freed up a little bit. Let's get the other one done the exact same, at least on the front for right now, and let's see if we make a difference, guys. All right guys, just got done mounting the front Desert Lizards back on there. I don't want to get all excited, but I want you to look at this. I'm gonna lift up on the rear over here. Look at that. You guys see that movement? That's what we want. It was not doing that beforehand. And whenever I lift up, the axle, no tires and wheels on there of course, is actually making it go down just a little bit. And that's what I wanted. That's so much better already. Look how smooth that is. It has not been that smooth yet. All right, so I'm excited about that. I'm gonna put the uh, wheels and tires back on here as soon as we get done doing the rear. Let's get this rear done real quick. We'll fast forward it through for you guys, and then we'll see if this slime is actually going to fix the rear. All right, guys, got the rear done, got the front done. Now, once you look, see how smooth that is? And that's the rear. Now here's the front. This one's been setting for a little bit. You see how loose that is? That's how I want it whenever we put these all these tires back on. And then we're gonna do a little test and see if it's stuck anymore. But right now, I am liking it. And I do understand, guys, that these here should be kind of the triangular position, right? They need to kind of be kicked forward a little bit. I have something for you guys on another video. I will tease it at the end of this one, okay? So let's get these wheels and tires back on there. Guys, here we go. Real time reaction. Did the green slime do the trick? I'm going to flip this guy over. We're going to go really slow here to see. All right, you ready? Now, I'm going to set it down real slow to see if there's any give. Oh, and there is. Did you see the movement? Look at that. That is what we've been wanting, guys. Oh, yes. Oh, about time. Man, look at that. I can lift the rear up and the tires pretty much still stay planted. Oh, the front coming up. Let's check out the flex here. Lift the front up here. You can see that movement. That's what we've been missing, guys. You guys have no clue how excited I am about that and how happy I am that that actually worked. Now, let me show you what we're going to be doing to the rear suspension. If we don't change it, we're going to be doing the rear suspension to get these things kicked forward for the next episode or maybe one of the upcoming episodes. All right, guys, are you ready for these? And here they are. Look at those, those are carbon fiber tomahawks, okay? And I understand these things are apparently supposed to go in your rear axle somehow and get you way more travel. But what I'm going to do is there's no options on the RGT as far as being able to mount your, your body mounts. There's no add-ons or anything I can do to the body mounts. I've tried to see if I can swap these things and I can't do it. So what I'm going to do, guys, on one of the upcoming videos to get these shocks kicked forward more so I can get better suspension travel is I'm going to figure out a way to drill another hole or two in here, mount it to this body mount, kind of like so, and then get the shock and kick it forward so I can get more of a triangular design on there how we should be. All right? But, oh my gosh, I can't believe this thing's actually moving all together. It's about time, man. All right, guys. Well, that was another Arkansas RC newbie episode. I appreciate you guys watching. As always, please like, please subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you don't miss my journey with the RGT. I've got the uh, little tomahawk things here we're looking at mounting. I may or may not have gotten some anti-foams. Uh, we've got some motor stuff, some um, pinion two things. We have a whole bunch to come this winter with this RGT, so please don't miss it. Guys, we will see you on the next one.